Hello everyone, the Dimitrov Boulet Piano Duo here. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Alvira Boulet. And today we are going to practice a new piece that Alvira found written by Bach. It's quite a nice piece. Maybe you can tell us something about it? Uh, actually, I got it as a request of a fan. Somebody came up to us after a concert and they came with this piece. They said it was really nice. I listened to it and I instantly fell in love with it. It's a, a piece by Bach. It's Gottes Zeit ist die allerbeste Zeit. And it's a transcription by Kurtak. And what does it mean, Gottes Zeit is the... I, uh, I, I, I'll My... look it up. <laughs> My German isn't that great, but I think it means time. the time with God is the best time. I don't know. Don't be scared. This is not a religious <laughs> video. It's just a beautiful piece by Bach. Let's get uh, practicing. Now the piece says molto adagio. So I, I was thinking when the first time we looked at it, I thought one tempo could be this. Those are eight notes, actually, the pause is one, two, three, four, those are eight notes. And molto adagio, then, then you get a quad, quarter note to be one, two, and that I find to be not, I find that to be extremely slow. So another version that we could do is... Shall we try it once in the slower tempo, uh, just, just to see, because it's nice when you don't know about the tempo, it's nice to just explore different versions. And that's, that's a little version that maybe I, actually it's difficult to say, I, I don't know if I prefer really the, the faster version. I like also the slow, but I feel that it's even slower than a daggio, that I, I don't know, what do you think? I personally, I prefer the slower tempo. But I do think that actually since we're recording this now anyway, it's a great opportunity to maybe play both of them completely through from beginning to the end and to see which one we prefer as a public point of view because it's always different sitting here. While you're playing, you always listen differently than when you're actually sitting sitting in the public. So What do you mean public point of view? So when you're sitting in the public, right, you're not doing anything, you're listening. So if we record it now, we listen back, That's then we're listening from the public's point of view. Anyway, let's show them the slower version. Yeah, cool. dangers mm -hmm. in this temple. One is you fall asleep. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. There is the danger when you when you choose such a difficult, such a slow tempo, what's difficult in such a slow tempo is to maintain a very long line. Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot do that, then what's going to happen is the piece is going to, you're going to actually start your audience or even yourself as a player, you're going to actually start drifting away. Falling asleep was a joke, but in a way you're going to start drifting away and you're going to start losing the line and your audience is going to lose attention. So depending on what tempo you choose, a little faster tempo would be easier to maintain, mm -hmm. would be easier to actually follow. 
and a slower tempo would be more difficult. Do so you already have a preference now? Or? I have the preference for the faster at the moment. <laughs> and that, that might change later on, but at the moment I, I like this. I don't like what I did in this mm -hmm. bar when I'm you see that I have this and then I have the A flat goes into an octave and when that happens I think if I go if I play the lower note too loud mm -hmm. it kills in a way the flow because I think the flow should be like this and not It destroys so it. Destroys it a little bit. Yeah. Shall we take one bar before? Yeah. From here. Yeah. once more this because I get from A flat mm -hmm. yeah. to, to A natural. I think that's a nice spot. Can we do from this mm -hmm. bar and hear hear the the different intonation? Yeah? Yeah. you have the embellishment I have to catch on pedal the last note mm -hmm. otherwise we get the blur we just have to practice it to determine where I have to change the pedal can we do that bar yeah by the way it was really nice knowing that you had this change because I could change with you now yeah exactly so if you play with somebody always always let the other person know of a change maybe you want to make you, you know then the other person is also aware of the place you want to change a color and then you can when that person is aware he will also or she will also change something and then when you play two or three or four people the whole change will be will be quite obvious uh, can we do from here mm -hmm. sorry was too late difficult okay um, can, can we do directly yeah. there mm, okay once more I think I just have to not put any pedal until your main note okay. can we try once yeah sure from here okay Start from this bar.
practice the embellishment. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I caught a little bit of uh, of the upper note and then we got a second. Oh, okay. Um, then we got... We want to avoid that. Can we do it from here? Is it possible? feeling that throughout because we stopped that our tempo also our tempo decreased i know decreased. for sure yeah, yeah. Um, so that's something but i think that's normal when you when you stop and when you work you you change your tempo uh, we will have to have in the future of course times we're going to also do times that we explain things to you right now what what we do so it's so you know what what we're working on but sometimes we'll have just playing through without any interruption because then your tempo will remain approximately the same and you will have a better overview of the piece you will know approximately how it sounds mm -hmm. yeah. so now we stopped uh, but in the future we would like to actually maintain the tempo and of course we're going to experiment actually with a slower tempo mm -hmm. as well I think that might be also something that depends on what location you're playing I don't know, somehow you have to always feel the atmosphere of the place you're playing in and I think that will affect your tempo more or less as well. Yeah, don't be rigid, don't mm -hmm. decide on one tempo and that's it. Tempos can change according to, exactly, exactly according to the whole, according to the audience, to the energy. Every time you play them for yourself, it's a different energy, you feel different.
this will be enough for today. The only thing I think I notice and that will work in the next section uh, in the next sessions is when we play a faster tempo, when we have a faster tempo, the 16th note, sometimes you tend to do them a little bit too easy. They speed up. Hmm. And I have the feeling that with this sort of piece, you need to maintain not easy 16 notes. Mm -hmm. The 16 notes are kind of a way, in a way, a struggle. They 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 don't come with these like in a romantic piece or mm -hmm. a or a yeah. classical style piece. Yeah. So when when you have 16th notes, let's try next time to to get them a little bit. No, especially not doing a, a celerando, like yeah, not yeah, speeding yeah. I up. I get what you mean. Yeah. It, it shouldn't come too easy. Yeah, it's like da da da, da but yeah. like da very even and it's very distant music. Yeah, it is. Yeah. In the same time, it's very emotional, but it's at a distance. So okay. yeah. we'll try this. Anyway, this was our practice vlog for today with this wonderful new piece we Elvira actually discovered by Bach. Uh, we enjoyed practicing. If you have any comments, any questions, anything that's important to you, leave your comment down below. Don't forget that if you enjoyed the video to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified every time that we upload a new video. Not only that, you can also help us grow our channel. Thank you for watching this video, for us recording it for you was a great pleasure and we will see you next time.